Skyrocket at Kennywood is one of the most overlooked coasters. Whenever you hear an enthusiast talk about Pennsylvania's coasters, they mention Phantom's Revenge, Phoenix, Skyrush, and maybe Steel Curtain. No one mentions Skyrocket. Skyrocket isn't talked about at all. Does it deserve to be talked about, or is it just mediocre and left behind for good reason? This is my full review of Skyrocket at Kennywood. Before we get into the ride experience, let me give a bit of background information. Skyrocket is the first ride you come across when entering the park. Guests actually walk under this ride when entering the park through the tunnel. This ride isn't huge, it's only 95 feet tall, which is over 20 feet shorter than Gemini. Don't let its height fool you, as this ride has a lot more than you would think. While the speed is only 50 miles per hour, it still feels pretty fast. It isn't too long, only 2,100 feet of track and about a 1 minute 5 second ride. But because this ride has a short track length and a bit of speed to run through, it's very tightly packed. The tight layout is the reason why some people think it's a great coaster. Let's jump into that layout. After boarding the tight trains and pulling down their lap bars, riders take a left-hand turn out of the station. Parallel to the nearby street, the train accelerates up to 50 miles per hour. It isn't the most intense launch, but it is still fun to throw your hands up and feel the wind in your face. A tight valley leads into the top hat. This top hat is my favorite element on the coaster. The intense valley into it is a lot of fun, and the ejector pop at the top is surprising. The drop is excellent. It feels a lot like a dive coaster drop. Passengers hang for about a second before dropping down in a superb floater-filled drop. The next element, according to Wikipedia, is a cutback, but I think it's more of an overbank. This overbank is intense and full of laterals. It reminds me of a smaller version of Millennium Force's turns. The train hauls through a zero-g roll, which surprised me a lot on my ride. My expectations were low, and this element proved to me that this ride blew away my expectations. A violent and fun whip to the side through this element leads up into the mid-course brake run. A sharp airtime moment drops downwards into a tight turn. This turn is intense as well because of the speed you have going into it. Another zero-g roll occurs, this time being a little worse than the last one. With less speed means less of a whip, so this inversion didn't do much for me. And then the ride kind of dies. The second half is the reason people hate Skyrocket. According to some enthusiasts, the second half is boring and doesn't do anything. Maybe I just got a great ride, but I enjoyed the second half a lot more than I thought I would. The janky turns in the first part were a bit weird, but overall, they were fun to ride through and very smooth. While the airtime was weak on the return trip, I still enjoyed popping up and down in my seat. It isn't too intense, but just pure fun, and that ends the layout of the coaster. Next up in this review is the categories to test the strengths and weaknesses of Skyrocket. The first category is airtime. Skyrocket will get a 6 out of 10. While Skyrocket isn't meant for airtime, it still has a decent amount. The main pop of airtime is on the top hat. The top hat provides a great ejector moment at the apex, and the drop afterwards provides a bit of floater. The second drop in the ride also provides some excellent floater airtime. While the airtime in the second half is weak, there still is a little bit, and I have to get credit for that. The main reason it gets a 6 out of 10, though, is because of that top hat. It's a great way to kick off the ride. The second category is intensity. Skyrocket gets a 7 out of 10. In my opinion, Skyrocket is more intense than people say. While it is weak compared to rides like Phantom's Revenge, it still has some good moments of G's. The best moment for me was the first overbank turn. That overbank is very tight and provides a ton of lateral G's. The other intense moment is the turn off the mid-course. It's tight and low to the ground, which provides a lot of great positives. Unfortunately, Skyrocket doesn't have the best launch as the acceleration is pretty slow, but those two elements I mentioned before bring it up to a 7 out of 10. Category 3 is Transitions and Whippiness. Skyrocket will be getting another 7 out of 10. Transitions are everything in a coaster, and are one of my favorite elements of them. A good snappy turn or a whip to the side can really make a ride for me. Skyrocket has some great whippy elements. Two elements come to my mind right away. The first element is the overbank turn. The transition into the turn is rather intense and it provides some great whip to go along with it. The zero-g roll is probably the whippiest element on the ride. All throughout the fast inversion, the train is whipping it around rapidly, and that makes Skyrocket earn a 7 out of 10. Pacing is up next, and Skyrocket will get a 5 out of 10. While the first half is great with pacing, the second half isn't. In the first half, the coaster transitions perfectly. The second half, on the other hand, really ruins the pacing. After the zero-g roll, the ride slows down rapidly. The rest of the ride is slow and drawn out, which brings the coaster down to a 5 out of 10. 
Smoothness is the second to last category, and Skyrocket will be getting a 9 out of 10. Skyrocket is one of the smoothest coasters I've ever ridden. While I had a small vibration in the second half, it was barely noticeable throughout the ride. There is zero rattle in the first half, which is a big plus on the ride. The final category is Restraints, and Skyrocket will get an 8 out of 10. While the restraints are pretty open and comfortable on Skyrocket, the trains can be very tight. The trains are very tight, so it is hard to get comfortable in the seats. The restraints are very comfy and fit everyone perfectly. They don't come down too much during the ride, so you should get all of that great airtime enthusiasts want. So Skyrocket's final score is a 42 out of 60, or a 7 out of 10. Trigger Alert! In my opinion, Skyrocket is better than Steel Curtain. Maybe it's just because I had to wait over 4 hours for Steel Curtain, but I always thought Skyrocket was whippier, more intense, and overall more fun of experience. Skyrocket is one of those toasters that isn't too crazy, it's just pure fun. Kind of like Fahrenheit at Hershey Park. It still has some great elements. That top hat provides a bit of forces and some great air, and the rest of the ride is full of whippy maneuvers and pure fun elements. I highly recommend Skyrocket to anyone who visits Kennywood because you will have a blast riding. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Comment below what you think of Skyrocket and join my Google Classroom, there's a link in the description. Email me if you have questions or concerns, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day.